Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Moritz Braun and I'm working at the Institute for Ship Structure Design and Analysis at uh, Hamburg University of Technology. It's a pleasure to present to you today a review of uh, recent progress made on geometrical and stress concentration characterization of welded joints. Before I begin my presentation, let me briefly give you some background information on why this topic is of particular interest. When it comes to uh, fatigue assessment and uh, finite element modeling of welded joints, typically the uh, uh, geometry of welded joints is required as an input to build FE models. In a recent study, together with some colleagues, we found out that uh, methods that are used to uh, uh, quantify the geometry of welded joints can lead to quite different results when it comes to um, parameters that are in, of particular importance to characterize uh, the joints, such as, for example, the toe radius you can see here on the right. If we look at the figure that we see that uh, all four methods uh, lead to different uh, relative radii and also show quite high variation when it comes to the obtained radii. So this leads to the general question on how can changes of uh, local weld geometry be accounted for and used to improve fatigue assessment methods uh, of uh, welded joints. And in order to be able to do that, uh, two particular things are required. The first is uh, fast and reliable methods, of course, to uh, characterize welds. And the second is how um, such measured uh, weld geometries can be used as an indicator for fatigue performance. When it comes to geometry measurements in the past, typically uh, calipers were used to uh, measure weld geometries, as you can see on the top right. But nowadays there are a number of uh, um, laser manufacturers, for example, that pro also provide software to measure weld geometries. Uh, similarly, there are also a number of uh, uh, software packages and tools available from universities, as for example, our tool that you can see here, which is based on a segment, segmentation of weld surfaces. In order to be able to uh, uh, assess weld geometries, a uh, particular task has to be fulfilled first, which is you, one requires uh, a certain uh, um, measuring density in order to obtain uh, statistically verified uh, results. And this is what we did in, in this study here. For example, where we uh, chose uh, small scale butt welded joints that you have seen before, and then uh, increased uh, the number of slices until we found a uh, um, constant mean value. And as you can see, with small number of slices, uh, the variation is quite high. But once you reach a certain level, you can find at least con or almost constant uh, mode values for parameters like. Uh, flank angle and vertical radii. What you can also do with uh, measured weld geometries is uh, perform a quality assessment of welded joints, for example, in accordance with uh, the ISO standard uh, 5817, which led to quite interesting results when we did that, uh, for example, on a, a fillet welded joints, which you can see uh, here in, on the left side with the typical parameters that are used uh, for qualification. So while we want to increase the number of uh, uh, measurements in order to have a statistically verified result, on the other hand, the burst uh, uh, weld quality that uh, was observed is uh, decreasing with uh, increasing number of slices, which makes sense as you uh, certainly increase the likelihood of observing that measurements. Now, now that we have seen that uh, um, there are certain tools that can be used to qualify welds in order to, uh, uh, for example, obtain data for finite element modeling, we are also interested in uh, new methods in order to uh, obtain, for example, stress concentration factors at uh, welded joints, because it obviously doesn't make sense to create an uh, FE model for each uh, measurement. 
So what has frequently been done in the past uh, was to use uh, empirical parametric uh, stress concentration functions. However, in recent years, there were a number of studies that uh, presented a new approach based on neural networks. And what, what is typically done in those methods is that uh, based on a number of inputs, for example, the applied loading and the geometrical features, a neural network is created with uh, an output of uh, stress concentration factors. And uh, in a number of studies, which has shown that the prediction accuracy of uh, such a method uh, once trained is much higher than of those uh, traditional parametric uh, correction functions. A similar way um, that also led to some interesting uh, developments was the application of uh, other machine learning uh, tools to, for example, estimate uh, failure initiation sites and also fatigue life. So this is quite a new topic when it comes to fatigue assessment. Um, in this study that uh, where I present here some results of uh, uh, we have uh, performed uh, um, or we have uh, used a quite large database of almost 500 fatigue tests to uh, um, determine where cracks initiated and uh, uh, we tried to uh, assess the fatigue life based on a number of input parameters that I've mentioned before. What you can see first on the left is that uh, in, in this confusion matrix, uh, we can achieve a quite high uh, accuracy of uh, predicting the uh, failure uh, initiation location. So here we divided this uh, butt welded joints into uh, uh, four different failure initiation sites, top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right, and try to predict it. And what we see is first in this upper box, the algorithm is quite uh, good at uh, assessing whether the uh, or failure initiated on the top side, similarly on the bottom side. And also what it is quite good at is in certain categories to uh, predict the actual failure location. So on this diagonal, those are the values that are the, uh, where the predicted failure location was the same as the uh, actual failure location. Then uh, we used uh, explainable machine learning algorithm to uh, create a model where we used the input parameters that we measured as well as uh, load related factors uh, to predict fatigue life. And again, what you can see is that uh, the algorithms are quite good at uh, predicting um, fatigue life. The majority of tests are within uh, plus minus uh, two of the actual fatigue life. Based on uh, explainable machine learning, it is also possible to assess the mutual influence uh, of uh, various factors on both the failure look, uh, initiation locations and fatigue life. And this is what we uh, present here. Um, on the left side, you can see the uh, most important uh, influencing factors from top to bottom when it came to failure initiation uh, locations. And what you can see here is, uh, and what is also basically expected, that uh, misalignment uh, Parameters are the most important for where a crack initiates. Uh, to some extent, also a few um, geometrical factors uh, of the local well geometry are important. And when it comes to um, fatigue life, obviously the applied loading in terms of stress amplitude has the highest influence. But also what has a quite high influence is again, uh, the angular misalignment of joints. And to a lesser extent, some uh, particular uh, weld geometry parameters are here mentioned, but compared to the influence of uh, angular misalignment, which creates secondary bending and uh, stress amplitudes, uh, their influence is quite low. So with that, I would like to come to the end of this short presentation, and uh, I hope you found uh, the presented results uh, interesting. 
If you would like to read more about them, uh, please have a look at uh, the paper and also the uh, references uh, given in the paper. Thank you very much.